What are you guys doing for Father's Day? Oh, my family's taking me to the Thai Cats home opener. It's on Sunday, June 16th, which is Father's Day. Cool. We're doing the same. It's going to be a blast. I'm really excited to see the new Stifley. It's almost 20,000 square feet of food, drink, and music awesomeness, including a live band before every game. Yeah, they've got Cody Robinson performing there before the opener. Hey, how'd you guys get tickets for that? My wife got them at TieCats.ca slash tickets, or you can call 905-547-CATS. From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is a Thai Cats This Week. Built by Turkstra. Whatever your next home project is, build it better with Turkstra. Visit TurkstraLumber.com today. Welcome to Thai Cats This Week. First episode of the year, and we have stepped it up for 2024 for the last three years. It's It's been the award-winning show with me, RJ Broadhead, the voice of the Tiger Cats, and Luke Tasker, the, the analyst, but we had to bring in a defensive stalwart in Mike Daly, and so many Tiger Cats fans have grown up with the Hall of Famer Steve Milton giving them Tiger Cats information, and now we've got them at the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Luke, you all set for another year of Tiger Cats this week? I absolutely cannot wait. I told you, I'm so excited to have uh, a defensive analyst because I don't know anything about defense, and I tend to never <laughs> say anything about defense. So <laughs> well, it'll be good to have uh, my my one of my best teammates, Mike Daly, here. Mike, you know your job now. <laughs> Well, and Luke says this, but Luke knew defense is in and out. That's the reason he was uh, such a good receiver. But uh, maybe one day we'll switch and I'll be the offensive expert. He'll be the defensive expert. See how that thing goes. And Steve, you've you've been at training camp. You've covered the team for for decades. It's great to have your insight on Ticats this week. Well, thanks. Let's just maybe... I'll, I'll try to live up to that, RJ. Okay, I'll try to live up to that. These guys are, you know, no defenses. I'm just defensive. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well so we're almost uh first games friday tiger cats are traveling to calgary that'll be a nine o'clock eastern time start and of course as always you can listen on the tie cats audio network go to tiecats.ca slash listen and they're playing the calgary stampeders so there's there's a ton of changes on offense ton of changes on defense coaching I'm fascinated just to to find out what you guys are, are looking forward to that you want to see in the in the 2024 season. Uh, Steve, let, let's start with you. What what is a position, some players, just something specific you're looking for on two in things. Friday's game? If you don't if you don't mind, RJ, two things. Uh, one of which is uh, I'll be watching the tackles, the offensive tackles, because they're brand new, and and uh, they they've been getting all of the action. Uh, basically all the way through, try to get them up to speed. And, and we, we deal with that actually on uh, Tie Cats today. This week we'll be talking to Brendan Bordner and, and, a, and a few other p- people like that. But the other part is get off to a good start. You know, get off to a really good start. Uh, sometimes they haven't got off to the kind of starts they would have liked. And, and uh, it's a very difficult place to go in and win in, in Calgary. So th- those are the, the two things I'll be looking for from that game. Yeah, we'll, we'll get more into the uh, yeah. getting off to a, a sure. quick start uh, as we go on. Those, those tackles you talked about, Steve, Quentin Barrow, and you mentioned Brennan Bordner. Right. Otherwise, pretty solid offensive line with David Beard at center and then the, the guards with Brendan Redvenberg and Coulter wood How about you, Mike? Uh, you know, you, you, you saw the cuts, and I, I think maybe some of those surprised you, which probably means some guys really stepped up in camp. Yeah, well, there's a couple, right? And, and I think I feel like I'm with the fans on this one, too, where you see a guy like Omar Bayless um, get released. And, and really when that happens, it's just a a subject of some of the younger guys stepping up. So we saw Shamar Bridges step up, right? Patman at that last preseason game, we couldn't stop talking about him, right? And then obviously Stephen Dunbar Jr., who who's going to be coming in and you know is a proven receiver in this league. There's just sometimes there's just no space for as well as Omar Bayless did. The other one I'm looking forward to is, uh, well, and, and frankly, you know, a teammate of mine that got cut, but he'll find somewhere to to land is Mason Bennett, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's because the addition of David Menard and and maybe the young guy Luke Brubaker, they feel like they have some depth there. So it's one of these things. I'm very curious to see how they use those two guys on the defensive line, specifically David Menard, because of how well he's done in, in his past and. I'm um, curious to see how that rolls out. I'm glad you brought up Mason Bennett because I, I think all of us feel the same. Such a fantastic guy and a personable guy and, and looking forward to where he ends up in his, in his CFL career for sure. Luke, I don't know if you were like me looking at the, the roster and trying to narrow down 
a couple of players or a couple of positions. There's there's a lot of changes this year. What are you what are you looking forward to? Yeah, I think it's a little uh, maybe obvious or, or you saw it coming that I'm interested in this receiving core. And uh, it's great to see Stephen Dunbar Jr. and Tim White back together for uh, to presumably be sort of the leaders of the of that receiving room. Uh, Shamar Bridges uh, kind of jumps off the field. Uh, we didn't see him all that much uh, in the preseason, but uh, excited to watch to watch how he progresses. There's only six true receivers on the active roster right now, and that's kind of as few as you would carry uh, 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 going into a game. So we'll see kind of how that uh, how that flows. What I am expecting, and what we we did get a taste of in the preseason games some of those heavier body personnel groups, you know, some three receiver sets and four receiver sets getting mixed into the, into the game more frequently than we've seen over the past years. Tommy Condell's offense has always been open and preferably five wides, right? That's sort of been the, the, the makeup of the Ticat offense for a decade of football here uh, through June Jones and Ken Austin included. So if this is going to look a little different, uh, you know, it'll be exciting to watch and the combination of maybe some of those bigger body sets, with the kind of you know hurry up offense that we're expecting to see from the from the Ty Cats right off the bat, I think it's exciting. I think you get a defense on your heels and you max protection or let's say heavy protection, and you give some deeper concepts some more time to to develop. So uh, excited to see that. And of course, there's a name that we haven't said that's very uh, important to all of this happening uh, in Bo Levi Mitchell and uh, both his performance and his health uh, staying at a high level. See, you, you stole my guy, Luke. But I, I do, <laughs> I, I do have a story I can break. I, I talked to Bo at uh, at practice. Now camp's over, so I talked to him at, at practice, and he, he told me the whole story. He's not wearing a glove. He's worn a glove. You mentioned June Jones in his freshman year in college. He started wearing the glove. June Jones told him to wear it, and he's worn it ever since. He's not wearing one this year. Reason being. <laughs> The glove he used to wear was a, a, a Reggie Bush, basically, a Reggie Bush pattern, and it had like a threaded finger, and it, it was almost like skin. When he'd throw the football, it, it, it wouldn't move. The glove would stay tight to his finger, so he had great control over the football. He bought all of those gloves, so he, he bought them all. Reggie Bush, we know, doesn't play anymore. They don't make the gloves anymore. So he, a few years ago, bought all the gloves. He ran out of them last year. So he was wearing a receiver's glove, but that finger gave a little twist at the end. It didn't have that same threading right. that, that was almost like skin. So so he decided, uh, I'm going to go without a glove this year. And he, he worked on it all off season. A lot of it's mental because he's had that yeah. glove on for so long, but he, he's feeling good. He likes how the ball's coming out. It's not sailing on him. So And he's in great shape. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Bo Levi Mitchell. There aren't many teams that – win a, a great cup without a great quarterback and tiger cats have one and and i'm looking forward to see what bo can do the gloveless Blo bo mitchell bo levi that's, mitchell that's really interesting <laughs> mike and i can attest the different makes of glove like you know the cfl has gone through different partnerships with that you know different different athletic brands that have, that have made equipment for us when i first came in we were using like these old like cottony reebok gloves and they were actually awesome i loved them but the but the the, the grip is a little different and then as we went through all these partnerships they, it's crazy. Some of them, some of them are super stretchy. So a really hard pass will almost stretch the glove off your hand while you secure the ball. And the opposite is true too. You can get a really restrictive glove, but you know what? We should, he should try. Go back to the Darren Flutie days and the glass cut, the orange glass cutter gloves. You know, you see those little pictures. <laughs> I always wanted to try those on. I could never find them. That might even be Jeff Fairholm days. Okay, there you go. Good. <laughs> as, as players, guys, how, how important are those? I mean, a lot of this is psychological. Part of it is technical, as, as you guys have just explained, but part of it is psychological. And Bo's looking, of course, for looking for anything motivational, and, and, and you guys mentioned, and, and correctly so, his, his, his conditioning. We watched his footwork. He didn't have happy feet either in the black and gold game or in, in, in the, uh, the time that he's played. Uh, in practice, uh, he hasn't had happy feet, especially on the three feet drop, which is one of the, one of his goals. When you do those little incremental things, and then you also have some psychological things, uh, how helpful is that for somebody that's looking for some kind of rebound? I think we'd all admit that he'd be the first to say that he's looking for some kind of rebound here. Yeah, I I think um, you know the psychological things are really good for you know, in between the plays and maybe during the week and, and stuff like that. I feel like it just kind of helps you focus whatever it might be, right? Whether it's, you know, laying out your 
your clothes before you get ready in the morning, stuff like that, right? Like small things like that that don't really matter come game time, but just help you focus throughout the week. But there has been times, especially, you know, Luke talked about the gloves. For me, it was cleats. Like I ripped through a pair of my cleats and trying to find a new pair of cleats, it would affect me all the way up to the game, trying to break some in and it would drive me nuts. But once you start playing, everything's just going to come back that you uh, that you kind of put focus on, right? And I think whatever Bo Levi Mitchell decided to focus on this offseason, he's going to be better at, right? It, that's the same thing with football. Whatever you decide to put emphasis on and put focus on, that's what's going to improve. The problem is, is that now you need to try to put focus on so many areas that all of them can improve, but it's just there's not enough time in a week. So I think it'll help him if that's what he's – worked on it and looked at is his footwork then that's what's going to be better right so it's his just going to be developed been unbelievably team. tight this yeah, week the ball, the ball now, monday wasn't as good but the ball exactly luke it looks really good and like tight as a drum and a lot of it is on and, and i think when it's tight like that and you're and you're actually doing the right follow-through and you don't have happy feet you're also putting it on the correct shoulder and and uh, particularly in tuesday's practice but but after monday he was a little rusty because he hadn't played much and and uh, none of the a guys had and on offense and uh but but other than the, the tackles and and but the ball was just it was unbelievable unbelievable particularly in yeah. dunbar and steve especially that's, at dunbar steve that's part of that's part of like scott milanovich and his offense and, mm-hmm. and making sure the reads are clear and understood like Guys, we've seen Bo Levi Mitchell now for two preseasons and an inner squad uh, game, and essentially his feet are slowed down because he knows exactly what he's looking at, where the ball needs to go based on the defense. Once you get that down and there's some good coaching there, it becomes a lot easier to be able to deliver the ball properly and on time and, and with proper footwork. So. Maybe a part of it's there, too. Luke, I want to ask you with chemistry between a quarterback and a receiver because it was, it was a small sample size, but it just seemed like Bo and Tim White in the preseason really had a bond that it, it felt different. Am mm-hmm. I reading too much into that? Um, I'm just I'm a little careful to, to read into into rhythm or timing or chemistry or, or sort of some of those like intangible things on the football field in a preseason game. But I think Bo just looked super, really sharp, and and he had a number of drops in the, in the time that he did play in that first preseason game. Where I think Absolutely. if those drops weren't there, it, it, the game would have almost felt like just Bo was just it was just Bo. Like all all the receivers were doing their job, but Bo was just electric, uh, and the drops sort of sort of dampened sort of that the the, the overall view of the game. But uh, no, you're right, and I I I I thought Tim White I, I've just kind of enjoyed all training camp just seeing his. <laughs> production his his apparent health i mean that's there's so many uncontrollables when it comes to health but also you know some guys just know how to stay. simone lawrence just like stayed healthy his whole career like he it was like nine years into his career before he missed a game or something weird like that or he had missed one in 2013 or something and uh and you know, some some guys just have a knack for it and and in and strangely enough i think you can you can you can even get better at it at some at some mid-range of your career there uh and so so uh Tim White, I'm so excited for him, but really, I think, I mean, Bo across the board and with all these guys, uh, you know, I, ho- I hope he can have a, a, a number of answers out there. Steve, you've seen a, a lot of Tiger Cats offenses. I'm excited for this offense. Right away in the offseason, the Tiger Cats locked up some very important guys on the offensive line. These two tackles are rookies, but they look fantastic. And then you've got Jordan Murray and Joel Figueroa on the on the sidelines trying to get healthy. So you got a couple of really good tackles behind them if if necessary. So there's a lot of depth there. We just talked about how great Bo looks. James Butler, I talked to him in the off season. He had a thousand yards rushing, and he, he couldn't have been more disappointed. He he felt he left yards out there, and he, he's he's such a, a a fun guy to talk to, and always trying to get better. So maybe we even see a better James Butler, Tim White led the all receivers you got Stephen dunbar who's an an all-star and i've talked to some people about shamar bridges they say he's a thousand yard receiver in the cfl all day long so you, you put all that together you, and uh do you think this might be one of the best offenses we've seen in a while for the tiger well, cats steve everything's potential at this point i mean and that, that that's about as far as we can go and and i and i yes i i would agree with that and and you know the they want to make some changes. Um, we're looking for consistency uh, from this team, I think, and that's one of the big things. You can you can have those 
break games, but you've got to be able to be more consistent. And I think that's what they're looking for. And I think that's where the veteran receivers come in and an improvement. I agree with with uh, with what Luke said. I, I think there's been there's been some improvement in in uh, in in a guy like you know in in certain in certain players or what you said RJ sorry that uh, particularly Tim White who you think well he's sort of at the age where he's it, it's more about sort of but he's got better and worked at, at, at certain things I think it the knee bone is connected to the thigh bone and that will be the the determination here the biggest thing protection absolutely the biggest thing it's why they they, they invested very heavily in, in the interior alignment, but also why they went and got what they thought were some younger tackles. And, and uh, it's no accident. Those guys have played almost every snap of every game and of every, I mean, they're get, trying to get them up to speed. And, and particularly on the left side, I think eventually when the, one of the left tackles comes back from injury, you'll see Bordner move. I think he's the better tackle of the two at the moment. He would shift over to, to the right-hand side. But that's connected to the running game. So it's connected to the to the no huddle offense, the quick play offense, all of those things, and to do it with in a, in a seamless manner. It's connected to the to the bigger package, uh, the tight end package, whether it's a hybrid tight end uh, based on Canadians, uh, maybe one of the fullbacks playing out there, or one of the offensive guards. There, there a lot of it has to do with that, and, and is maximizing your two biggest uh, playmakers. Uh, I mean, you want there's other playmakers there, but the two biggest by far are White and Butler. And, and the idea is to get the ball into those guys' hands in the in the right situation as often as they can. And if they if they're picked up somewhere else, then that's why you need Dunbars and those types of people who are proven people that deserve attention. Uh, and and then Bridges will morph into that role eventually. Right now, Bridges isn't going to get much coverage, right? He, 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 until he proves himself, and and uh, and that's fine. That's fine. We know from what we've seen that he does some very precise things with roots, and he's really got a few future here. And 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 of course, uh, when when uh, Patman gets in the lineup, that's going to be something else as well. Well, Luke, you played in some some pretty deep offenses. Uh, what what kind of a luxury is it to have weapons where there's there's so many good guys, there's so many options that the defense really has a a, a tough time with it. Yeah. Uh, it's huge. And if the quarterback kind of is comfortable with all of those guys, I remember uh, early on, like, so 2014 and 15, uh, uh, 16 too, where we would call like a option to a cluster of receivers. And as we'd leave the huddle, Andy Fantuz and I would decide who was going to run the option. And we did that until Zach Claro said, you got to stop doing that. <laughs> Cause I don't, I don't know what he's doing what, uh, but, but he would still throw it. He, he would figure it out. It would just take you. We, we would put him in a bind as he was waiting for us to develop, <laughs> but we would just switch positions without telling anybody and, and have the, and not that, not that, many people are going to have the freedom or, or whatever to do that. But, and then I remember Brandon Banks uh, in, in Toronto uh, one time uh, telling June Jones to have him, he and I switch and I, and for, to have me run the corner that he was usually running and have him run the what, whatever else. And, and, uh, and I scored a touchdown, you know, we just, we just changed it. And, and, and uh, we both, when we, we did that and we just knew we just, cause how the game was going, we just knew that that was going to be, be a, a slam dunk. So, uh, yeah, if, if you have some guys who can really get trusted and then you add somebody into the ring, into that inner circle with Tim White, which obviously could be Stephen Dunbar Jr. Or, at, you know, if Shamar Bridges can come along and some of those guys and uh, Keandre Smith, you know, he, he was productive last year. And I think we've he's had ball security issues, but I'm excited to see him kind of, kind of join that inner circle of trust uh, as the season goes on. Mike, give us a defensive perspective on a team that has multiple potential thousand-yard receivers, thousand-yard rusher, Hall of Fame quarterback. What kind of difficulties that it gives a defense? Well, yeah, it, it definitely. When you have guys all over the place that are able to make plays, you can't really lean coverage one way or the other because, you know, I, I remember multiple times in my career we would sit there if it was like a you know a Eugene Lewis we'd lean coverage toward and make sure we had hands on him and, and slow him down and you know if it, it was just Chad Owens back in the day too same thing we'd make sure we were getting bodies on him and leaning coverage toward him the bigger the bigger thing in the bigger picture is Luke actually alluded to it already because of the use of fullbacks extra O linemen kind of that max protection where you see them bring more bodies in now that means that there are less receivers on the field for sure, but you can move them around a little bit and get the matchups you want. So now the offense isn't necessarily about 
picking between which side of the ball you're going to throw on or, you know, what if you're going to go the field or to the boundary. They're sitting there going matchups and saying, okay, which DB do we think Shamar will be better at beating? Which DB do we think Tim White can work work more against, right? Little things like that that you can now set up with this offense to essentially pick what you want each play. So that's what I'm really interested to see because – um, I feel like that's where this is going and the, you know, kind of the molding that Coach Milanovic is doing. Um, and now with all these weapons that are out there, like you mentioned, RJ, it's, you know, it's pick your poison and the worst DB on the other team is going to be sitting there with his eyes wide open going, <laughs> oh man, another guy, oh, here we go, a different guy, right? And it's just going to be that over and over and over again. What's the ultimate that they want to set up? Rather, let, let's let's take the individual people up, the, the types of defense. Is, there, is, that, is it that cross across the middle to, to White? They're trying to make sure that that's going to be a mismatch every time, that the late cross uh, across think, the middle? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I, I think what it is, is is kind of putting bigger bodies out there to say, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going right. to try to defend the run and bring a bunch of guys into the box and, and try to stop the run? Or are you going to sit back in coverage and then we'll just play a numbers game, right? And and Luke, I'm, I'm curious to hear um, your take on this because what we've been seeing, and, and any fan that's been watching it, is a little bit of that muddle huddle, right? Yeah. And what that means is not really getting into a huddle but just kind of talking to each other before yeah. the play. And and maybe that's part of it, right? It's trying to see where the numbers are. Yeah. I, I love that, that uh, the muddle huddle, like, you, you know, it's like, uh, it's like kind of laid back. I mean, in the sense that you're not, it's not hurry up like two minutes, like, Hey, there's 45 seconds on the clock and you got to get 40 yards. It's not her. It's not like that, but it's also just like, it's almost like continuous play. It's like turns in, like feels like you're playing soccer. Like the play ends, you kind of jog and you sort of never stop jogging until all of a sudden you're waggling again and you keep going. It's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> interesting and it can be exhausting and, and, it, but it can be exhausting on a defense as well, obviously. Uh, but to, to what you're asking there, Steve, what I like about what we've seen more of, and of course you don't know about preseason. Like, you know, we don't, no. we, we won't know what's going to happen offensively until they start. until we see a series develop or see a half of play uh, on Friday night. But the, if we see some of that, the heavier body, uh, the heavier personnel groups, so you throw a tight end and fullback body or two in there. So what you can do then is, of course, you can run seven, eight-man protections. And then you, you're, with your three true receivers, those guys can play. The, the concepts challenge the defensive levels further down the field. Or you can you have the freedom to do that. So right. you can run a deep post route over top of a twelve yard curl. That's a deep concept. You're stretching the safeties and the deep right. halves. Whereas in sort of a five man set, you, you gotta it's a five or six man protection. So you have to stretch. You're horizontally stretching the Sam linebacker and you're wrapping behind him. So it's like a six yard route with a twelve yard route to put it simply. So if you have a three receiver set. You you can do interesting things. You can do double moves at deeper deeper levels. You can let Tim White open the throttle up on an 18 yard comeback while you have a seam route or a, or even a corner route over top of it. So I just think it's I think it's fun. I think you see I think you see a sort of a different uh, style of even receiver play. Well, it's going to be an exciting offense. This is Ty Cats this week. I'm R.J. Broadhead, the voice of the Ty Cats, Luke Tasker, the great receiver for the Tiger Cats, now the analyst for the games, Mike Daly, a longtime Hamilton Tiger Cat, and he'll be on Tiger Cats pregame, halftime, postgame, and of course, Ty Cats this week, and Steve Milton, who's on Ty Cats today, a, a daily update, as most Ty Cats fans know, on what's happening at practice and all the news and details and insight and every week on tie cats this week we'll look at the upcoming game and bring you all kinds of insight as well with the tiger cats and of course the upcoming game is friday against calgary in calgary tiger cats are going in early and it will be a nine o'clock start so if you can't watch the game we're happy to have you listen probably should listen anyway even if you can watch the game go to <laughs> tightcats.ca slash listen and uh, we'll have all the information for you and it'll be a fun game to call because game one of the season we've seen it uh, over the past few seasons where game one slipped away and and then tiger cats kind of dug a hole and and had to really have great finishes to the seasons and they've been able to do that and finally put things together and get themselves into the postseason but Wow, wouldn't it be amazing, Steve, if the Tiger Cats can get off to a 
a 2 and 0 start, a 3 and 0 start. Right. They've had some tough scheduling. Uh, Winnipeg in there uh, on the road it seems every four every, years, four yeah. years. Yes. Yeah. But uh yeah. getting that fast start just to be that team that is like, hey, we're four games in. We're fine. Everybody's trying to catch us. What kind of that would be such a difference I, for the Tigers. And I think yeah, this is not a must win game, but it's a game you want to win and and I think even though it's on the road even though last time they went into Calgary which was two years ago now because they didn't play there last year um that that was their first win there in 18 years and I go heavy on that I'm not as nice on Ticats today as we're being today <laughs> and here uh, you know because I have to point out some things that have happened over the last little while and to me don't chase the standings if you can help it so you can't go to as you say like it's 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 more about the, the the larger start in the long run, but you have to play the games that are in front of you. So it's more about how you do in the first four or five. I would say six. Like most coaches break things down to the, to six segments, but you can't go uh, five and one, four and two, or even as you mentioned, RJ, uh, two and zero, oh, three and zero. Oh, if you don't start one and zero, oh, right? I mean, it, it makes it easier to do that. You can go maybe five. You know, like don't chase the stand. And you're facing a team here now that has also made some significant changes and they 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 feel they have something to prove after missing the playoffs last year and and uh um it they they feel like there's well, a lot of good players there but they're not gelled yet i mean Calgary they're like did, everybody else they're not ready yet they did finish third and lost to, to oh, bc sorry, yeah, in, the, in, yeah the playoffs a year before yeah sorry so they were kind of in the same boat as the tiger cats tiger losing cats, in the yeah. in the division in the first semifinal. Round, yeah. But yeah. Malik Henry, he got injured in training camp, knee injury. He's done for the year. That's a, a big piece missing. They lost a lot of close games last year, but they were last in touchdowns, last in yards per game. Jake Mayer, the quarterback, but I couldn't help but uh, look at who the backup is, Mike. And <laughs> is, is there a starting quarterback anywhere in the CFL that, is excited when Matt Schultz gets signed because he can be a starter. We've seen it and teams bring him in because is he the best backup? Is he a good starter? He's just a great guy to have around. First of all, just a fantastic person, but to have him in there, that's sort of a safety net for the Stampeders. If, if uh, Jake Mayer gets off to a slow start. Well, maybe that was part of the conversation in the off season, right? When trying to set up the, where he was going to go and where he was looking is, you know, maybe one of those type of things where, okay, I have a pretty good opportunity here in Calgary to, to maybe get some games under my belt and, and start a few. But, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a short leash with uh, Jake Mayer and especially with uh, Matthew Schiltz back there. We know what he can do when he comes in. And, you know, he's as dangerous with, with his feet as he is throwing the ball. And, you know, it would be interesting to see if uh, Matt Schiltz got a couple packages in, kind of like what we saw – later on in the season with the tie cats and it, it, it's a definitely a wrinkle that you wouldn't be prepared for in, in week one as, as well as you would kind of near the end of the season um but yeah i think there's going to be a short leash there in calgary um, especially with matthew schiltz if he's been putting it together in preseason and, and kind of in practices behind the scenes it's a pretty unique start for the tiger cats in game one so they go out to calgary tough place to play and i i want Luke, you and Mike, I want you guys to talk about Calgary in a moment. But I want to ask Steve about Bo Levi Mitchell. Yeah. He wants a, a, a great season two with the Tiger Cats. Season one did not go according to the script that most people, including Bo, wanted it to. And the season starts in Calgary. His first game back in Calgary. There's going to be a ton of distractions. I asked him about it yesterday, and, and he's – He's not having any of the distraction talk. He is he is focused going into that one, as you would expect. But it's it sort of – it didn't matter when Bo was going to go back to Calgary. It's going to be a big game, but it just happens to be game one of this season. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on just Bo and going back well, to I Calgary and, and a game they need? We, we've talked to Bo. We've, we've all talked to Bo a little bit. And Bo isn't ignoring the elephant in the room here. And he dealt with it and talked about it. And he said, yeah, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be. But, you know, that'll be after the game. And maybe, I don't even know if it'll be 
be before him. He'll see people. He'll see all kinds of people that he wants. I talked to Dave Dickinson earlier in the week about it, and uh, he thinks that the fans will be very welcoming of him, but that they'll want uh, the Stampeders to win because they cheer for the sweater. They cheer for for the unif- uniform. Uh, I think he, Bo just wants off a lot of this this year about uh, both with him and Milanovic and 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 Bo is about hanging on to the football making not only things we talked about earlier in the show but that whole thing about you know let's make sure that you hang on to the football that, that, because turnovers are the things look at how close the games since uh, 2014 have been between these two teams even though Calgary's won the majority of the games I think of the 16 games they played since uh, we the, the team moved into to Tim Hortons field in 2014 10 10 of them have been decided in the final three minutes and 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 uh, 11 or 12 of those 16 have been decided by seven or fewer points. So one turnover, one fumble, one kick return can be the thing that, that makes all the difference. And as everybody talks about in football, you don't know when that play is going to happen. So you better make sure that ha- And so Bo's, one of his big things is to hang on to the football, is to make sure, you know, that he makes the correct throws as well as all the technical things that we just talked. Bo said he'd probably have 50 or more friends and and family at at the game i said oh will they be wearing number 19 in black and gold he said they'll be wearing number 19 i just don't know what color so (laughs) some people don't want to update their jerseys you know a lot of money on that (laughs) yeah and and, you know i mean there are people in calgary are always going to see bo as a calgary guy you know no matter that he's coming in on with a with a that's how they're going to see them because if he's he's in that pantheon well unless he puts up a 50 that spot on friday that is, what's that <laughs> unless he puts up a 50 spot 50 on friday spot on, yeah well that's right <laughs> but he's always going to be in that pantheon he, he made the hall of fame uh, by already by what he what he did in calgary and it's very difficult to be in the pantheon I mean, there's a couple of times in the last two years when both doug flutie and Dave Dickinson, who would be contenders for this honors themselves, as I was pointing out earlier this week. A couple of times they've said he's the best quarterback in franchise history. Well, that's, that's you look at the numbers. Big stuff. You know, both at, at that town, that's big stuff. It is. Yeah, they've had a lot of great quarterbacks, uh, and Tiger Cats have had a lot of teams have had trouble winning in, in Calgary. Oh. I think that uh, 2022 victory was the the first, and I want to say 18 years. So, exactly Luke, I'm, I'm I'm just taking a guess but uh tell us a little bit about playing in calgary i don't think you had a win there did you <laughs> uh I, I did not i remember Jeez, i remember <laughs> well it was 18 years luke's <laughs> luke's so young <laughs> he doesn't I remember, remember 18 years ago i remember parts of a game that one team was in the 60s and the other team had single digits and i blacked yeah. out a lot of it but 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 I, I i wake up at night sometimes and remember uh, here are bits and pieces of that game. Uh, it is a tough place to play. I remember uh, horrible, horrible things said about a certain horse that runs around the field every now and again there and, and, and what certain people would like to do. But the, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really challenging uh, uh, place to play. And, uh, uh, but uh, it, every season's different too, and and maybe Bo Levi Mitchell is the perfect uh, leader of a Ticat team to to start uh, once again winning out there. Luke, we've got Peta on line one for you if you want to take that call. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was very discreet about how I delivered yeah. that. So, <laughs> how about you, Mike? What uh, what stands out to you playing in Calgary? Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, well, it combined with week one. Like there, there is a legitimate altitude feeling that I feel whenever I would play there. Like it would get, you'd get the pasties in the mouth, Luke. I don't know if you had yeah. that too, but you couldn't drink enough water to quench your thirst. You felt like you couldn't breathe, stuff like that. And the hard thing too, is if it's a warm day after, you know, week after a training camp, week one, a lot of these starters don't forget they didn't play a lot of the preseason right all they did was kind of practice in training camp they had you know maybe a quarter maybe a half in the first one right um but they're not used to that 20 second play clock going all game long long drives if you're on defense right like luke said with the muddle huddle like things going constantly it's fast and when you're not used to playing that entire game it creeps up on you pretty quick now tie in the heat that you're going to experience out there a little bit of the altitude where you can't, you know, can't get enough water into you. It's, it's a tough place to play and kind of a wake up call. But 
to be fair, it's a wake up call for Calgary as well because it's the same situation on that side. You know, not used to that play clock, how fast that thing will go, and how tired you're going to get. But hey, Luke, if uh, Peter comes after you about that horse, buddy, I'm I'm on your side. All right, Thank so you. <laughs> we'll, we'll go together. <laughs> hey, the the horse is good. Sounds like he had a lot of ex- you guys gave him a lot of exercise. <laughs> Very good, RJ. Yeah, he yeah, got a good couple go. trots in on on our account. That's for sure. <laughs> well, very but, easy, very easy game for for where RJ and I sit. Uh, yeah, it's a very it's easy so game. Well, yeah, it's easy. Now, to, Steve, it's easy too, to be so. funny. Right? Yeah, so, bruise yeah. free, Steve. Yeah. We're bruise yeah. free. We're bruise free. <laughs> Steve Milton, Mike Daly, Luke Tasker. I'm RJ Broadhead. This is Tie Cats this week. Uh, Mike Daly, you probably thought. We talked so much about the offense that we weren't going to talk defense. (laughs) Tiger Cats defense, so many changes. It's been a a long time since there's been three new linebackers. Kyle Wilson has been around, but uh, starting a season as as one of the linebackers, uh, the secondary looks pretty good. The defensive line is going to be very, very interesting, but so many changes. What when you see this defense, what are your thoughts? Yeah, talented for sure. Like you just start with the defensive line. You can go too deep across the board and say there are a lot of players that can make some plays, right? Like Nick Usher right now isn't a projected starter, but you saw what he did in, in some of the preseason. And if you watched any of the Montreal games, he was he was a player, right? The two guys we brought over from Toronto, Barlow and uh, Hendricks, like those guys get after the quarterback. It's been proven. Right, I am, like I said at the beginning of the show, very excited about the David Menard uh, edition. I think he's, you know, just one of these workhorse guys, lewd by example kind of thing. Um, the interesting part will be that Will linebacker spot. I mean, we've seen Kyle Will Wilson play. He's going to be in that middle linebacker. He's going to be kind of controlling that defense. Um, with Ray Wilborn back there, he had some pretty good plays, right? I thought DQ Thomas played really well too, but it's mm-hmm. going to be interesting to see how that all shakes out um defensive back jonathan moxley that they just brought in he's a proven player right he is a proven player he'll be able to provide some depth there um my one question mark and concern that i'm gonna have and you know i don't think it got solved in in the preseasons from at least what we saw uh practice might be a little different but it's that sam linebacker spot right with carthel flowers lloyd with talbert in there i I don't think we've seen enough plays pop out from one of those guys. And from a defense pr- perspective, that Sam linebacker spot is a lot of work. You're going to get a ton of plays coming towards you. You get picked on on a lot of offenses, right? And you have to be able to do both linebacker stuff, defensive back. It's tough. So that's where my kind of, you know, binoculars are going to be focused on in the game. But that's where I'm a little bit nervous. Everywhere else, I, I like what's what's coming. Yeah, it, there's so many changes. Luke, I, I know you had a, a great interview with Richard Leonard, and uh, um, you look at Stavros, Cats, and Tonus. He really stepped up, led the Tiger Cats in interceptions last year. Jamal Peters coming in. He's led the CFL in interceptions. Mike mentioned Jonathan Moxie. Uh, could the Tiger Cats be a, a real ball-hawking team and – Could we potentially see a a lot of interceptions from this defense? I think absolutely you could, and uh, we'll see what happens. How how we how much we can see uh, Jamal Peters out there, and and uh, the things that he's done too, and the uh, uh, you you see the I I love what you said there, Mike, about the Sam linebacker position and how crucial that is too. uh, uh, With with force it with turnovers that uh, that Sam is involved in kind of it's like one of the most flexible players in the defense, right? He has to be, he's in the linebacking core. So he's in the run game pretty frequently. He's going to, he's going to have times each game where he adds into the pressure. He's of course, crucial to the low side uh, zone coverages often. And any kind of, any kind of weak, weak Sam coverage, he's going to drop back and be a true defensive back. And so like uh, a Sam linebacker in the CFL has to do everything. It's kind of the position that doesn't exist in, in football down South. Right. I mean, it's kind of like a a strong safety, but it's really sort of the, maybe the most unique uh, of the CFL uh, uh, defensive positions. And so it's kind of, that's why it's hard to find the right body for it because it's a very different kind of, kind of, kind of a player. I mean, I think of Eric Harris, maybe one of the most like quintessential Sam's that, that we've seen because he was such a, such a just a, a, a 
a mix between a free safety and a linebacker and and a, and a half. So uh, I, we got they've got to get it figured out. I hope somebody rises to the occasion to solidify that spot. I, I, I think I yeah. agree absolutely with both of you guys and and with Mike uh, saying that in general people go at the Sam just because that's yeah. because of what they have to do. I think it's going to be very specific in this game. They're going to try and go at it because the, because the cum- accumulation of what we've all said here, neither of those those guys have yet have come out and really established themselves or 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 proven that that not uh, proven's the wrong word, but 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 have have uh, made a, a huge impression yet. So they're going to go at them I think maybe more than you normally would. And and I think that's where the strength of the defensive line and, and and let's let's include the Sam in the secondary for the moment now. Okay, let's push the Sam back into the secondary because a lot of time that's what they yeah. are. Uh, um, that's why the defensive line was changed to the manner in which it was and changed a bit thoroughly. The rushes have to become sacks. Hurries have to become. Or sorry. Uh, little pressure has to be more of of uh of uh hurries on them they've got to hurry that and they want to do it with four if they can and occasionally with bringing somebody or you know that kind of thing but they want to do as much as they can with four to help out that secondary and and that's i think it a lot of this comes down to what are those whoever the the lineup of the six to make four is or or eight seven to make four is across there they've got to to be a little more effective in actually changing uh, rushes into hurries and hurries into sacks. They've got Mike, to make life more uncomfortable. Sorry, Steve. Uh, DQ Thomas, did he play his way onto this team with the, the preseason and the, and the camp he had? Well, absolutely. I think, you know, any of those rookies that had to put together a good camp definitely played their way. I think what he did was played his way onto the active roster because right. – you know, in terms of the Americans that have to be able to dress, you need to be pretty impactful in not only your side of the ball, so offensively or defensively, but you have to be pretty impactful on, on special teams. And over the two preseason games, which we saw, which is really the only evaluation you can get out of special teams, is when you're full tackling and, you know, it's a, a street fight down the field the whole time. DQ Thomas, he... He popped up a bunch of times on special teams making tackles. And then not only on that, on defense, it looked like he was making every single tackle in that second preseason game. So it's one of those ones where now DQ Thomas has solidified himself to at least be a backup behind both those linebackers. And then, like we've seen multiple times in the CFL, all it takes is one injury and then you become an all-star. So I'm excited to see how DQ Thomas takes that role on. If that truly is a role, it's still yet to be seen. Um, but yeah, he definitely played himself fun to be a, a designated import is what it's called. I know internally with, with the tie cats, they call it designated impact player. Um, so whatever that role might be, I think he, he, he earned that one. Steve, uh, well, the four of us were at the black and gold game a few weeks mm-hmm. ago now, and, uh, you made mention, Steve, that you thought the offense would carry the the Tiger Cats through the first portion of the season. The defense has, has been such a strength for the Tiger Cats. Now that you've had a chance to see them in game action, see some of these new guys, uh, are you still feeling the same way? I still feel the same way, and I think what I feel is that it, 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 I can't predict what's going to happen if they will do it, but I think I think the onus is on them to do that. Just because there's there's a little more, not necessarily continuity there, but 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 there is i mean there's 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 some continuity there i mean uh and and it Bo is is an improved guy and i th- i think that's norm normally it would be the other way around because it takes you know there even though there's a there's a lot of experience on the on this defense and uh proven guys there's really they haven't played together casey was pointing out to me earlier this week he says, i'm the only guy of, of all the defensive linemen that, that that will have a uniform on friday night who was here last year you know, at the at 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 the start of the year. So and 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 uh, so that takes a little. I mean, it, it's easier for defenses to 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 gel early. And normally, I would say, always the defense is ahead of the offense. But I think it almost has to be the offense. I, I really do. That's interesting. That uh, it's a great point, Steve. That that Steve is the only returning def- or, uh, Casey Sales is the only returning defensive lineman and I remember talking to him multiple times last year and and he was studying hard and learning and 
trying to get that uh, camaraderie and gelling with the rest of the defense. Luke, do you think that'll help him have everybody else fit in that he so recently was, was trying to, to learn everything that he can kind of take a leadership role and maybe Great expedite point. that process? Great point, because you can see it when you talk to him as the layman, which I am. Like it, it, just when I talked to him, like it was like suddenly, not suddenly, but over time, he is he is taking this on quite seriously. I mean, he, he you can see it in just the manner and how often and how thoughtfully he's been thinking about things, and 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 he'll tell you about each individual that that is there and and the kinds of things he's taken more of the. Scott wanted him to to take it right from day one of training camp. He said, leadership from you, and he's showing that and and. I think what he went through last year is part of that leadership because he can help with a learning process. It's probably, it's probably process. true. I think, I think sometimes you can almost, you're there for so long that like you kind of, it's like for you forget what it's like to be a rookie. Like, it's just like, yeah. I can't even the, the total tonnage of what you don't know is just baffling to me <laughs> as a grizzled vet, <laughs> but like, you know, that he was, that he was just had to just go through it. I think it could think it could be a benefit. You know, you kind of you kind of wish for uh, sort of the uh, the you know a, a Ted Laurent or like a, you know sort of like a quintessential you know vet uh, there, true a team vet. Uh, but uh, of course, Ted's sort of still around the the organization, which is probably great too. So uh, yeah, I I think that Casey has a natural leader. He he strikes me as having a natural leadership too that will help. It's really obvious that he stepped forward here. It's really obvious. Yeah, you could almost uh, look at the statistics, the game stats last year and see when he became comfortable because he really put together a, a lot of sacks and was breaking up plays and knocking passes down. Yeah. And he told me he's worked on his cardio this year. So he wants to be more in, involved tracking guys down, maybe even in coverage. I remember <laughs> we saw Jagera Davis a few years ago in coverage and that really oh, got classic. the crowd going. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, listen. As a defensive back and as a linebacker, if those <laughs> defensive linemen drop back into coverage, you just pray the ball hits them in the back of the head because that's all you're really going to get out of them. I think Jagarrett Davis and maybe Julian Hauser were the two that I could see make a few plays back there. But remember, yeah. there'd be a few times Teddy would get into a backpedal every once in a while, and we were like, oh. Teddy, don't backpedal anymore. Just turn around and let that ball <laughs> hit right. in the back of the head, please. There was one play. There was one play a couple of years ago. Well, I can't remember which, if it was you, Mike, or somebody. Somebody said to me, uh, you know, I said, look at the Davis was. Uh, oh, Hauser was all the way like 17 yards downfield, and he said, your defensive back said, did you see who was right beside him? It was the other defensive end as well. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that that's yeah, that would have been Jagari uh, at that time. You know, they, yeah. you know. They're both going looking for the pick, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. let's go around the horn here, guys, and uh, mm -hmm. see what, what you think a, a key to a win for the Tiger Cats on Friday would be. I, I talked to some people uh, at practice this week, and they think not turning the ball over. They don't turn the ball over. They got a really good chance to win. Luke, can it be that simple, or is there something else that uh, that you're looking for the Tiger Cats to do to win this game? Sometimes it can just about be that simple. It really, it really can. Remembering that, you know, turning the ball over is just half of the of the ratio, right? It's also taking the ball away is the is the second half of the turnover ratio. And so sometimes, you know, you, if you just don't make that mistake and, and and allow enough time in the game to pass where the other team makes that mistake, uh, sometimes it can sometimes they can be that impactful. Uh, We've seen some poor turnover ratios early in the season uh, for the Ticats. I remember in 2019, when we had the best regular season in Ticat history, the turnover ratio was just like very natural for us to win. Like we we did not, it was not normal for us to turn the ball over and the defense was taking it away uh, at will. And so like, it was just, you, you can, you that will, a, a positive turnover ratio blankets uh, a hand, a, a tons of mistakes uh, that, that you make elsewhere in the game. No takeaways uh, in the preseason for the Tiger Cats. Does that concern you, Mike? Um, a little bit. I mean, it's it's a lot of opportunity. I think we saw some opportunity that was there. Um, but again, you know, you, you talk about uh, Jamal Peters not playing, right? That's a that's a bunch of takeaways right there, right? Richard right. Leonard not playing a bunch either, right? Stavros not playing a ton. These linebackers that were playing. Uh, we're new, so they were just trying to do their job, right? You look back to what we talked about with Bo Levi, where it's 
you know, once you feel comfortable in an offense, then that's when his footwork cleans up and he feels like it's a lot quicker and it's a lot smoother. It's the same thing on defense, right? It's really hard to make a, a play on the ball, whether it's an interception, whether it's punching a ball out, when you're just trying to do your job because you're still kind of unsure on what might happen, where you're supposed to be. So um, I think what it is is because that back end is a little more veteran and, and especially that defensive lineman where there's a ton of experience on there, that switch turns quicker. Right to like, okay, let's get the ball now. Now I know what I'm doing. I also now can get the ball out and, and get a play on it. So I think that's going to come a lot quicker uh, with this defense, um, especially with Kyle Wilson back in there. If you get Jamal Peters back in there, I think it's, you know, there will be some opportunities. It's just uh, maybe the gloves that Bo Levi Mitchell is using. Hopefully the defense has some good gloves that they're using because, uh, listen, Luke, I swear – if it wasn't for the gloves, I'd be a receiver, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, maybe I just didn't have any Reggie Bush gloves at the time to be able to help that me out. That could have been it. Yeah, or the old Reeboks. They were great, too. Well, <laughs> right. you couldn't get the Reggie Bush gloves because Bo bought them all. That's true. Yeah. Uh, That's right. after that. Did he That's use right. any of those for golf? Like, he's a real golfer, too, right? Did he use any of those for golf? <laughs> well, he, he, he'd regret it if he did. Yeah, he, he, would. he ran uh, out. What, what Why did like I learn for golf? Actually, I agree with what both guys right said there, RJ. Football. And your left hand for golf, actually. For golf. That's right. Post. You're right. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, then you got the pair. Yeah. You're not wasting a glove. Obviously, turnovers and, and the things that Mike detailed so nicely there are, are, are huge keys. To me, uh, that is amplified by the trenches, as it always is. So win the battle in the trenches. And, and remembering, well, let's go back to the history of these two teams in the last. It doesn't matter who who's on the teams. These games are close generally between uh, other than a couple of exceptions that we pointed out but generally the last seven eight nine ten years between these two teams they're very very close and that will come down to say the turnovers or the takeaways either one and that starts in the trenches always does and and we've got to see that great trench work from 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 they they concentrated on the trenches again this year as most teams do uh that to me is a key an absolute key well, fant- fantastic stuff uh, on Tie Cats this week, guys. Uh, Tiger Cats are in Calgary on Friday, game one of the season. They want to get off to a great start on the Tie Cats Audio Network. We will have you covered. Steve Milton will have Tie Cats today leading up to the game. Of course, Tiger Cats game day with Simone Lawrence and Courtney Stephen. If you haven't listened to that or watched that, you have to. Simone Lawrence. Uh, going to be an all-star uh, in football and it's going to be an all-star in media too by the the way he's going on game day so that's a that's a fun show to watch mike daly's been on game day now he's on the game day on the pregame show and that will come your way at eight o'clock with uh, mike daly and bubba o'neill of course they'll have the halftime and the post game show and luke and i will have the call of the game starting at nine o'clock eastern time be sure to listen in, tiecats.ca slash listen. Steve Melton, Mike Daly, Luke Tasker, I'm RJ Broadhead. Thanks for taking some time out for Tie Cats This Week. This has been the Tie Cats This Week, built by Turkstra. Whatever your next home project is, build it better with Turkstra. Visit turkstralumber.com today. Like and follow the Tie Cats Audio Network on Spotify, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast content. And get a deeper understanding of your Hamilton Tiger Cats.